Good morning, beloved. Peace be with you. Today, we are, since we're beginning St. Paul's first letter to the Corinthians, we see at the beginning here, just in uh, chapter 2, he's, this, this small passage, he's giving us a little taste of um, a big thing in the Christian life. And that is the difference, really, of being of before being a Christian and after being a Christian. Uh, with before not having the Spirit of God living inside of us, not having the mind of Christ, and then after becoming a Christian, after being bonded with Christ and having this relationship with him, receiving, he says, receiving the Spirit of God and the mind of Christ. We have the mind of Christ, or we should, right? So this is, this is a, should be a huge, I mean, complete, clear difference. It should be just... Uh, obvious to everyone in the whole world who is a Christian and who is not. There should be no hidden thing, just by the way you're living your life, by the way you think, by the way you speak, by the way that we treat people, treat ourselves, with the freedom that we should be living in, freedom from sin, freedom from depression and despair, freedom from anything that would have a hold on us, any kind of addictions, total freedom, and filled with what Paul says, the joy of the Lord. There should be a certain, uh, a specific joy that overflows to Christian, uh, a specific, a, a certain fulfillment that we have in life. And we should always be 100% purpose-driven, purpose-driven with our Father's, the mission of our Father, His purpose. There should be no question ever, what am I supposed to be doing in life? What does God want of me? He has told us so many times, if you ever want to know what God wants of you, he wants you to do what Christ did. With the spirit of Christ that you have received and the mind of Christ that now you have put on. And the whole world should know the difference between Having the spirit of the world versus the spirit of Christ. Having the mind of the world and the mind of Christ. How many of us know Christians, even especially Catholic Christians, that are no different from non-Christians? They live just like the world. They think just like the world. They act just like the world. They cuss just like the world. They sin just like the world. They get drunk just like the world. They sleep around just like the world. kind of have to say if it walks like a duck, talks like a duck, smells like a duck, it's really a duck and really not a Catholic Christian. And in fact, you and I can call that out. We can judge that, as Paul just said. Now with the spirit of Christ and the mind of Christ, if you, and I re- if you and I really have it, then we can judge. We can judge. Because Christ is the judge. And actually, it's really the mind of Christ and the spirit of Christ making the judgment through us. There's a huge transition that has to happen for Christians. We, we have to get there. We have to grow. We have to mature. Uh, we have to go from... Uh, this is the transition. Uh, you could say Old Testament to New Testament. Non-Christian to a Christian. Before Christ, everybody just couldn't wait for a Savior to come and do it for them. Save me. Do this for me. Where's my hero? Where's my avenger? Where's my, you know, where's my hero who's going to do something for me and save me so that I can just keep living my life as I was living it, but without the trouble. After Christ, we can no longer think like that. We can no longer think, where is my Savior going to do it for me? Because now the Savior is inside of you, wanting to do it 
with you, through you, in you. It's not Christ do it for me, outside of me, apart from me, thank you, so I can just go back and live as I want to. Christ wants to continue saving with you, through you, in you, with your life. You're the Savior now with Christ. You're the one who has to do it. With the mind of Christ, we need to learn to see the world like Christ does and see every situation in the context of the Spirit. What's, we see things physically, but what's really happening spiritually in a situation? And so we have to ask Christ at different seasons in our life, okay, God, here's how I see this part of my life, but how do you see it right now? Because however you see it is how I need to act upon it. So when Christ walks into the synagogue in the gospel today, everybody there saw it one way. Oh man, here's this demon again inside this guy. We can't do anything about it. We're powerless. And Christ sees it a different way, doesn't he? He sees a demon inside of a man, and he knows those demons do not belong inside that person. So with the Spirit of God inside of him and the authority and power that comes with the Spirit, he commands that demon, those demons, it said, what, do you do, or what are you here to do with us? He commands those demons out. See, Christ sees a problem and he resolves it. So the same has to be with the Christian. The Christian has to see a problem and with Christ resolve it. Not see a problem and go tell Father. Not see a problem and beg God to do something about it. Because isn't God now inside of you? And the power of God inside of you. And the mind of Christ inside of you. If you're a Christian, yes. See, there's a huge transition, complete change, to the extent that any one of us think, I need somebody else to do something for me. I need God to do something. We're missing. We're not acting like a Christian. We're not acting like the mind of Christ. Anytime we see a need in the world, a need in our lives, a need in, some, in our situation or around us, we as Christians with the Spirit of God and the mind of Christ have to first, the first response should always be, oh, not, not, oh God, please do something. But it has to be just like Jesus. Father, you're already doing something. What are you doing? Show me what you're doing. Tell me what you're doing. Share with me what you're doing right now in this situation. I don't want to only see this situation like the world does, helpless, powerless. Show me this situation as you see it. With your presence, with your power, with your authority, with your love. How, or what are you doing right now, Father? Because that's where I, I want to participate with you. That's what Jesus did in every single situation we read up in the gospel. And in this situation, clearly the Father was doing freedom, was doing deliverance, was revealing that something is different here. The kingdom of God is now present. And so Jesus just acted on it. We, we set up before the simplest responses. You just close your eyes when you see something. Jesus... I love you. Is there anything you want to do right now through me in this situation? He may say no. There's many people Jesus walked right by who were sick and he did not heal them. So he may say no, nothing right now. Or he may say yes. Tell that demon to get out of that person. <laughs> So 
So this is, this is what Paul is getting at, slowly teaching or just naming for the Corinthians. There's a difference now, Corinthians, church in Corinth. You've got to be different than you were before. You know, Corinth was like Vegas, Sin City. He said, you guys got to be different now than the rest of the sinners there. You've got to be free. You've got to have the mind of Christ. You've got to allow the spirit of Christ to act in you. With the spirit comes what the people noticed in the gospel. Authority in the spirit realm and power. Authority and power in the spirit realm. We have to learn about these things. This is what Paul is also saying. These are describing spiritual realities in spiritual terms. This is the, a whole new spiritual world opens up to the Christian. You like traveling? Here's a new world for you to travel to. But it has different customs, different language, different vocabulary. There are different principles that govern this world that you and I have to learn because in this world is our true identity. Sons and daughters of God filled with the Spirit of God. Sitting on thrones, judging principalities. And if we don't know this world, we stay powerless. We're as good as a non-Christian. If we don't know this world, if we don't know its customs, if we don't know its spiritual realities and spiritual terms. There's no limit to Christ in you, except for you, and what you will let him do. So we have to keep going more and more and more and until it's totally obvious to those around us, wow, you are a Christian. <laughs> till, we, till the people around us, till the pagans around us, the non-Christians around us, look and respond to us like they responded to Christ in the gospel. Astonished at his teaching, because he spoke with authority. That means he, he owned those words. He was living those words, 100% conviction. Many of the teachers in Jesus' day, did, they did not speak with their own authority. They would say, according to Rabbi so-and-so, they spoke quoting everyone else but with the Spirit of God inside of us, we should be speaking with the same authority of Christ, with 100% conviction of, how, of living with the mind of Christ. And not just authority, for he owned this, the Father's teachings as his own teachings, but he had authority and power. He had power to exercise the authority. Notice there's a difference between authority and power. He actually had the power to exercise the authority in the spirit realm and command demons to leave someone. That's what we have to grow into. Growing in the spirit world and the spirit, spiritual life is like growing in the physical world and the physical life. It takes time, it takes effort and energy So, as Paul says to one of his crowd, you know, we have to um, get beyond spiritual milk. Where we're no longer spiritual babies looking for someone to take care of us in the spirit. But we need to grow. We, we're eating real spiritual meat. Real spiritual adults. We know the real spiritual realities in their terms. We know the mind of Christ, the authority and the power of the Spirit we have received, and we live it with the freedom and the joy of the, of the sons and daughters of God. 
So, anytime you catch yourself wishing some savior would do something for you, or somebody comes to you with a problem and you think, well, maybe you should talk to the priest, you're still thinking like a pagan. You're still thinking like a non-Christian. You're still thinking in the Old Testament. You're not thinking with the spirit of Christ or the mind of Christ. So you need to cancel or reject that thinking and say, Father, I have the spirit of your spirit and the mind of Christ in me. What are you doing right now? How can I participate with you in helping this person right now in front of me? Father, we thank you for all that you've given us, even though it can be scary to discover this whole new spiritual world with its realities, with its terms, with its teachings, its principles that we're not used to, that we cannot see with our physical eyes. But we thank you that you are a good teacher who is patient, and you keep teaching us. <clears throat> we pray just make that you would give us a grace today to make it uh, more evident in our lives that we have received the Spirit of God. And if we're not sure, we can always ask you for more of your Holy Spirit. Because Jesus promises that how much more will the Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask of him? Help us to be 100% positive by evidence and fruit in our lives that we have received your Spirit. And help us, Lord, to put on the mind of Christ so we think like Christ and see situations like Christ and therefore react with the spirit and authority of Christ. We pray these things together in Jesus' name. Amen. Let us stand together.